everyone and welcome back to the channel and to another explore around the Dorset area. Built in the early 17th century, Lulworth Castle is a picturesque site of an immense historical significance in East Lulworth. It is situated in the scenic Lulworth Estate, close to the well-known Lulworth Cove and the equally famous Durdle Door in a 20 square mile countryside setting. Join us for an adventure of fire, loyalty, wealth, and an incredible visit back in time. Lulworth Castle was originally built as a hunting lodge for aristocrats and was renovated and refurbished multiple times in the 18th and 19th centuries, with different architectural styles being incorporated. And for centuries, the castle has been the residence of the Weld family, who came into its possession in 1641. In 1641, Humphrey Weld, who was the grandson of a rich London dealer and direct ancestor of the current owner, purchased Lulworth Estate from Thomas Howard, who had built the castle here between 1608 and 1610 to complement his manor house at Bindon Abbey in the nearby village of Wall. But Humphrey did not have the castle for long before the Civil War exploded in England. During this period of time, the castle was occupied by parliamentarians who stripped the lead off the roof to make musket balls. These were later used in the siege of Corfe Castle, 17 miles away. And at this time, the Weld family seat was at nearby Bindon House, but this was burned down by the parliamentarian troops. So once the castle was returned to the Weld family, it became the main family home and remained lived in by the family until the fatal fire of 1929. Sir Humphrey's loyalty to the Crown may have not served him well during the Commonwealth period, but following the restoration, he was rewarded by being made Governor of Sandisfoot Castle and Portland. But that loyalty could be a double-edged sword, and Charles II visited in Lulworth in 1665 where the cost of his stay nearly bankrupted the wields. One of my favourite things about visiting here is the entrance to the castle. As you can see, it's richly elegant, with its statues at the front and their triumphant poses, and the stunning windows and the steps that lead to the door. One of the first rooms we walk into is the billiards room, a part of the great hall next door, but it was transformed in the 18th century into an elegant reception room. Mostly the rooms were pinpointed towards pursuing separate activities. It so happened that this room was quite masculine and in the 1860s, it was a hangout for the gentlemen to play their billiards drink, smoke and discuss matters that they considered not suitable for the ears of the fairer sex. This is the South East Tower and it is formed of six floors. At the very bottom was the South Basement entrance, which we are standing above before we head up the stairs. The next floor is the Master's Study. This room was only entered via the billiards room behind us on the ground floor. It was a retreat for privacy and to avoid the cares of family life. named the Red Tower Room. This room was one of the main bedrooms and more than likely named after its colour scheme of the time. Then we passed the Ladies' Maids Room. She was high up on the list of the hierarchy of the servants and very well respected. This room was made for her as a tower bedroom but with a smaller fireplace than the room below in the Red Tower 
And finally, the top floor would have been the attic room. Up until the late 18th century, only this room could be entered from across the roof from the central tower. Although it was usable as another bedroom, this room was only ever used for storage. While Lulworth Castle was initially designed to be a hunting retreat, it has been renovated multiple times and stands today as a magnificent mock medieval Victorian mansion. The castle has a plain exterior without any decorative features and has four towers at the corners of the square. The towers are four storeys tall and provide spectacular panoramic views over the Purbeck countryside and towards the Jurassic coast, which stretches deep into Devon. The views you get up here are just spectacular, overlooking the entire estate. And on a great day, you can see Lulworth Castle House that was built in 1977, and Flowers Barrow, an Iron Age hill fort, and also Paul Harbour. The saloon, or the Great Hall as it once was known, was always the largest room on this ground floor. The Great Hall was originally built for its first occupants, the Howards. It was the first major room that visitors would pass through. It had decorative plasterwork and panelled walls that hung with weapons and an impressive fireplace that would have emphasised the owner's importance and would have set the scene for the rest of the castle and its rooms. Both the appearance and the use changed under the ownership of the Welds in the 18th century. It later became a stylish saloon, with central heating making this the perfect room for the family and to entertain guests as well. This later became an area where musical events would happen, as the end of the room with its raised stair made it perfect for special occasions. Now I believe this room is used for weddings and civil ceremonies, and you can certainly see why. It's absolutely lavish and beautiful. Next we follow around to the main stairs. This is incredible to see, as the remains still exist. Originally rising to the upper floors as wooden stairs, they were later remodelled in the 1780s to stone stairs. They still have some of the original photographs to see which is incredible. But weakened by the fire, the stairs cantilevered structure had collapsed. Now only the stubs of the stonework can be seen. It's so interesting to be able to explore each and every room here, some of which are filled with memorabilia and interesting facts about the estate and its growing history. Inside the North West Tower was a small chapel, an important part of every castle.
Some not well known facts about Lulworth are that there were 81 rooms in total in the castle, with 43 fireplaces. And the castle went through 17 owners throughout the time, and 14 of those were from the Weld family. And seven royals are said to have visited the castle, including James I, Charles II with the Duke of York, who was later James II, George III, George VI, Charles X of France, and the late Queen Elizabeth II. In 1929, a fire broke out on the top floor, where the other guests' rooms and the servants' quarters were. It was around 9am and Mr Wheel joined the servants and all of the estate work people in their efforts to try and extinguish the fire and prevent the flames from spreading. Workers had formed a line up the staircase from the ground floor to the top storey, with buckets and buckets of water being passed up and poured over the fire but the smoke was so dense that Mr. Weld and the others had no choice but to retreat. Later that day, the fire was still burning fiercely and it seemed no amount of water would help. So the workers did all that they could to take and salvage any treasures, art paintings, books and old furniture that they could, including saving the King's bed, which is actually on show in the basement displays. It was the next morning at around five o'clock that the fire eventually burned itself out and all that was left was a hollow shell and a devastated king. The renovation of the castle after the fire concentrated on making the building watertight and restoring the exterior. Although when you first see the castle, it does appear to be in good condition on the outside. However, the inside is a very different story it has not been possible to restore the interior to its original condition. Therefore, it provides quite a striking contrast. The well-maintained exterior giving away to the interior, which was ravaged by fire and left with bare walls and no internal floors. The kitchen and the cellars remain in a better state of repair, and these contain a really interesting exhibition about life in the castle up until the time of the fire. Underground and in the basement was the castle's main kitchen, where all the meals for the whole household would have been prepared. Formal dinners for over 50 guests would have normally been seated in the Great Hall. This moment in time, it would have been an era where freezers, microwaves and fridges would have never existed, so the head cook would have had to be on top of the game and would have to be extremely organised. Sadly again, the kitchen's original contents were largely burned during the fire, but amazingly the kitchen has been thoughtfully reconstructed, with a number of items a kitchen of this castle would have needed. And inside you'll notice a number of items that would have been used day in, day out, making the suppers of the wealthy, and an old recipe book that shows the recipes and invoices from that time. 
Amongst the kitchen area, there is an exhibition about the castle's history and a variety of well thought out displays, exhibits, cellars and memorabilia, which tells the castle's fascinating story. And after a visit here, why not pop to the castle's tea rooms for some homemade cake or a drink? It's a great way to end your visit at the castle before moving along to the other wonderful buildings here at the estate. Just a short walk away from the castle is the Chapel of St Mary in the grounds of Lulworth. It's alleged to be one of the finest pieces of Georgian architecture in the county of Dorset. It was designed to look like a classical garden building with its beautiful domed ceiling lit through clear windows rather than stained glass it creates a peaceful and inspiring atmosphere. It was in 1786 that Thomas Weld expressed to the architect John Tasker to build a chapel with family tradition and King George III gave his permission for a mausoleum to be built. This interestingly made St Mary's the first Roman Catholic chapel to be built for public worship in England since the Reformation. It is honestly breathtaking when you take a step inside here. Religious or not, the painted ceilings represent so many stories and the furniture and altar are just very beautiful. It's hard to not enjoy the moment. The 12,000 acres of landscaped parkland are open all year with fun woodland walks, an adventure playground and plenty of picnic areas. The estate is also home to the annual camp festival every July and it is a very popular wedding venue too. Worth visiting if you're ever in the beautiful Dorset area. So if you've liked what you've seen, please be sure to hit that like button, click the notification bell and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We would love to say a big thank you to our Patreons and thank you to those who support and watch the channel. It's always appreciated. Join us next week as we go on another explore. Till next time.